Hello and welcome to Financial Education for the Nation. My name's Warren Shoot, and how are you doing today? I hope you're well and this um, recording finds you happy, healthy and prosperous. But if you're not feeling so prosperous, you're in the right place. So in today's episode, what I want to talk to you about is the seven ways to build wealth starting today. So seven techniques, seven strategies that you can take on board right now to improve your financial well-being. Um, so whether you're new to this podcast, whether you've come across it before, or whether you're a seasoned listener, um, these are ways that you can take on board and implement and improve your financial situation. Because let's face it, what we all really want to do is achieve happiness. Um, deep down, it's really two things, avoid pain and gain pleasure. We'll do whatever we can to avoid pain, financial pressures, missing payments, going without, or gaining pleasure, looking at the things we can do with our money, um, possibly spending more time with our friends, buying gifts, sharing it, holidaying, that kind of thing. What we're really doing is just trying to make ourselves feel happier at the deepest fundamental level. And um, what I do here is share my 25 years experience working with clients in the financial planning sector and um, what seven things um, <clears throat> can do to help you create wealth. So step one, number one, the first thing you can do is have a plan, have a game plan. You know, um, we all think about going on holiday. We think about what we're going to do. We're planning our holiday. That's a plan. How are we going to get there? What time are we going to leave? What time we arrive? Do we, when do we need to eat? When we get to the resort, what are the things that we need to do? What do we need to take with us? This is a plan. Most of us folks spend more time planning our holiday, our two week holiday, than, will our, we, than we will our own retirement or our future have a plan, think it through. What kind of things do you want to do? What does um, retirement look like for you? Do you want to help your children through university and education? Would you hope to help your jan grandchildren anyway? Um, would you hope to be able to spend work less time so you can be there for your grandchildren, spend a bit of time to help your children out, that kind of thing? This is called a plan, a financial plan, and it all comes into the mix. And really, the people who um, I have met over the years who have been most successful have lived and worked their plan. The plan goes a bit deeper. It's basically, where are you today? What's your net worth? Let's look at your net worth. So assets, less liabilities, that's your net worth position. From there, you can then build on that, looking at your income and expenditure. What's the difference between the two? I guess it's also, you know, if you do your net worth and you've got income, less, ex um, sorry, assets, less liabilities, if you're a negative net worth, you've got a bit more work to do than other people. But in, in, in essence, you've got to really know where you're starting from. Where are you now? Where do you want to go? What sort of level of income do you want at retirement? What have you got to help you um, in retirement? And then um, take it from there. If you want help with the net worth statement, getting yourself started, go to warrenshoot.com in the download section. You'll be able to download a template there that a lot of the viewers and listeners have been using. Key the information in there and it pre populates some nice little things there. So that's step one, okay? Have a plan. Um, number two, second point in how to create wealth is make it automatic. Make it automatic. Take routine thought out of everyday decision making process. Um, we're busy people. We get up, we go have breakfast, we go to work, we get the kids, we have supper. You know, the day is crammed with different activities. I think we're probably busier now than we've ever been in our life. Um, and with technology and social media, it tends to make it even more busier for us, doesn't it? So if you can take something off the table, if you can re remove routine thought out of everyday decision-making processes, it's going to make life a bit easier for you. So automate as much of your life as you can. One of the things that we automate is our banking. You know, um, running the bank account system, having a bills account, having all your bills coming out of there, automating that, having a regular payment go across into your WAM, so you've got your WAM money, so your general everyday spending money. That's an automated process. If the pocket money to your children is an automated process, you don't have to think about it. But if you think about it and put it in place while you're in a good frame of mind, a good state, then you're likely to set it up in a better position than if you do it ad hoc when, let's face it, your emotions go up and down. Um, if you um, <clears throat> come home from work and your boss has been particularly unkind to you or unhappy or you've had a tough day at work, 
your state, your resourcefulness are going to be a lot lower than if you've been flying um, on all cylinders and everything seems to have gone your way. You're on a peak state. Okay, so we make decisions based on our emotions and our emotions are awfully affected by external factors. Sometimes it's our internal, sometimes it's our nutrition, our hydration, but a lot of the time it's uh, external factors. So, you know, getting yourself in a good frame of mind, clearing your mind, um, using things like mindfulness and stuff to get yourself in a really good frame of mind and setting your uh, finances up on automatic when you're doing it that way. And again, go across to the website, warrishu.com, and there is a download on there that you can use to help you um, set this up. Um, one thing to point out, I guess, is very important is this is about how to create wealth, okay? Seven steps to create wealth. You really must make sure you pay yourself first. So the first payment of making your automatic payments is at least 12.5% the first hour of a working day from yourself to yourself. So it's 12.5% of your gross income should be paid for your retirement. Set this up automatic. Even better, if you can join your workplace pension and have it deducted its source, so it gets deducted from your pay check, your pay salary check, before you receive the income, that's even better because you'll not even know, you'll even know that that money's been taken out. So you can get it deducted at source. So that's a great, great tip. Um, and remember, if you're age 22 to state retirement age, you will automatically be enrolled in your state, in your workplace pension. If you earn over 10,000 pounds, that is, I'm sorry. So 22 to state retirement age, earning over 10,000 pounds or more, you'll automatically be enrolled in your workplace pension. If you fall outside of that boundary. If you earn less than 10,000 pounds because you possibly work part-time or you're younger than 22 or older than the state retirement age, then you are still allowed to join the pension scheme. Your employer is wrong if he says you don't qualify. They are wrong, trust me on this. You are still allowed to join the, state, the uh, workplace pension scheme. However, your employer doesn't have to contribute to your pension contributions. There are some circumstances where they do, some circumstances where they won't, and there's actually a whole um, blog post and video, I believe, on this workplace pension. So go to warrantshoot.com, type in workplace pension, it tells you the ins and outs there. But you are still allowed to join it. Every employee is allowed to join it. So join it, it takes the time and hassle off of you finding a decent pension provider, and it also, you would assume on a group scale you would hope that the charges will be lower so it's more attractive for you but the biggest bonus the biggest bonus is that the contributions are going to be deducted at source before you get paid so when you receive the net contribution it's all yours to cover your bills and everything else with so it's already taken care of that's a really big bonus and a real big advantage and remember if you are self-employed you really need to do something about this you really need to um uh, join or set up a pension scheme so you've got some kind of pension provision yourself and work on the 12.5% of your net profit um, as a starting point, almost as a minimum really. This 12.5% really guys is a minimum. So um, that kind of blurs if I'm honest, that was step two and step three because step two for me was make everything automatic. Step three is take advantage of your employer's pension scheme. And you know, we've just gone through about making sure that you join the employer's pension scheme. I think it's so important you do that. And what's really more important is if you're, um, <clears throat> if you're self-employed, you do something on your own back. You, know, you go out there and you join a pension scheme and you set something up. You can go to alexo.co.uk. There's a pension available on there you can do and set up and you can see all the portfolios um, that are available. That's lexo.co.uk. Um, the 12.5%, let me touch on that for a little bit. <clears throat> The 12.5% really is a minimum. Um, I talk about it quite a bit because I would imagine most of you are contributing a lot less than 12.5%, um, often maybe 4 5% because that's what your workplace pension schemes um, amounts are. I really want you to up that. I want you to up it to more than 12.5%, but it's like everything. If you've never run before and I said, right, let's go and do the London Marathon, it'd be like a bit of a, an extreme uh, change so by starting to walk a little bit and then possibly jogging and then you build on that confidence level it's a lot easier to achieve so um, 12 and a half percent really is the minimum we really should be starting going above that remember you can contribute into your pension scheme a hundred percent of your salary plus bonus and p11d benefits and um, car allowance and things like that so you can contribute that is a maximum you can contribute if you're self-employed 
it's um, a hundred percent of your net profit um, that you can contribute and you can go back previous years if you've got unused allowances in previous years you've not done and that's both capped at ten uh forty thousand pounds that's capped at forty thousand pounds if you earn less than a hundred and ten thousand pounds a year so big figures big figures if you earn over a hundred ten thousand pounds a year you're in a different kettle of fish um, i'll cover that in a future uh, episode it's called the taper annual allowance um, and that means you're not allowed to put 40 in but it tapers down um, eventually coming down to ten thousand pounds so that was step three. Uh, make sure you take advantage of your employer's workplace pension. And if you don't have an employer's workplace pension, put one in, uh, one in place yourself. Step four, check your spending. You know, it doesn't matter how efficient you are. If you've got a big hole in the bottom of your bucket, all the income coming in is just going to go out the bottom. You know, if you've got loads of water coming to the top of the bucket, it's just going to go straight out the bottom if the hole is too big. But if we're able to limit or reduce that expenditure, the water will start filling up. And that's really the analogy that I want to give you with expenditure. Um, life for living, um, you know, we were given some very sad news today about someone who we work with um, is passed away. And it really hit home to us that, actually I only spoke to this guy a week ago, um, how precious life is. And I've often met people that have put their life on hold for retirement. And when I've done presentations to groups, typically when their husband and wife have been there and I talk about it, I can see one of them nudging the other one when I talk about this section. You know, precious time is slipping away. Life isn't a continuum. It doesn't just go on and on and on. You know, there is an end date and we're going to achieve that date and arrive one day. In the money plan is all about making the most of our journey, getting the most out of life during during the day, during the process. You know, what we're experiencing here right now is life. And if we stop living, if we stay up in our mind and looking at our thoughts all the time, we're going to miss the precious moments. So I want you to get out of your head and enjoy life. On the flip side of that, if we take all our money and just spend it today um, and be furious with it and don't control it, um, it can sort of get out of hand and we've got no provision for the future. Now, I was listening to Homo Deus, an audio book today, where um, apparently Google have set up a separate company. They believe that we'll be living to, I think, 150 um, or probably 200 in the next sort of 50 or so years. Now, that sort of blows my mind. But as a financial planner, the first thing that came to my mind was, wow, how are people going to be able to afford to do that? I just shared it with a, a client I do some coaching with. And he said, well, isn't the planet already overpopulated? So it's got its own challenges, but we need to make sure we're putting provision together for the future. And one way we can do that is by checking our spending. Um, I have a system called the bank account system. The bank account system comes under step two of the money plan, so it's being financially well organized. And that's where you have all of your payments coming out of one account. It's called your bills account. The first payment out of there is the 12.5% from yourself to yourself. And then you go through each item on that list and you say, do I need this? Do I want this? Can I get a similar experience for less? Uh, and an example that I share with people that I did myself when I did this in the early days, so I looked at our cable TV package and I thought it was extortionate. We only generally watch BBC and ITV. Um, there was loads and loads of um, payments. Uh, the payments was ridiculous, loads of channels, but we weren't getting value for money for us. So we swapped that out. I bought some free sat boxes and ironically, the free sat boxes were better. The technology in them was much better than we had previously. So we have no ongoing payment. We had a capital outlay uh, and we took Netflix on and we've got Netflix as well. So between the two, our monthly expenditure dropped by about 90%, I think. Um, and we were very happy with the setup. Um, I'm also a Netflix shareholder. And what I've learned over the years, I've earned more from my Netflix investment than I've actually paid them. So Netflix kind of a cost neutral. So I'm, I'm happy with that setup. And there are other things that you can do on that basis. <clears throat> So after going through each and individual item, do I need this, do I want this, can I get a similar experience for less, we look at your WAM, and your WAM is your weekly allowance, your walk about money, WAM. And that's a payment from yourself to yourself into a different account. 
and that's your walkabout account, the debit card. I generally use Monzo for my own spending. And that's what you spend your weekly allowance on. So it gets paid to you on a Wednesday. So this standing order between the two accounts gets paid every Wednesday. It gets paid on a Wednesday because when do you spend most of your money? Most of us spend most of our money on the weekend. So it's money cleared in time for Friday, Friday night, party night, Saturday, bit of shopping, Sunday, possibly a pub lunch. And then we're back to work for most of us on Monday. If we've run out of money, we've only got Monday and Tuesday to last until we get paid again on Wednesday. It's set up like that intentionally. The other thing that I'll say to you is once that money is spent, it is spent. We don't then dip in to the bills account for a top up. Also, if there's a big expense coming up, you need to manage that. You need to retain a little bit of your wham back so you're pre-saving for it. You're accruing um, some savings for it. But as a general rule, this works really, really well. Um, the weekly thing works really well because you're getting paid regularly. And when we get paid, we get a bit of a dopamine boost. Um, if you go on a diet and they say to you, you can't eat X, whatever your thing is. For me, it's pizza. If you said to me, you can never eat pizza again, or you can't eat pizza for a year, I'd be like, hey, life's not a continuum, guys. Life's time's running out. I want to enjoy life. But okay, if I ate pizza every day, my life's going to get shorter. So we're going to eat pizza in moderation. We eat it occasionally, maybe once a week or something, or maybe once a fortnight. And that's the same with the spending. We're giving you money in moderation so you have it available to you so you can enjoy things, but we're not allowing you to just to spend it on anything. Um, children's pocket money is another thing about your expenses. If, if I gave my children everything they wanted, they'd be spoiled and I'd be broke. Okay, so we have to create a pocket money system. We use two pounds for each year of their age every month. The amount doesn't matter, it could be 50p, it could be five pounds. Depending on your own family situation, they buy their wants, we buy their needs. So if they wanna buy something, they've got it. Make them do chores for their work so they appreciate earning money. Because trust me guys, when they finish school, there'll be less of a shock. You know, if they leave the, work, the schooling and they go into the workplace thinking, oh my God, this work thing's hard. That's the first experience I've ever had of it. Dare I say, I believe it's the parent's responsibility to prepare the children for the workplace, okay? Uh, the other thing you can do with your children is get them to physically pay their bills. So for example, if they have a mobile phone, you can pay them the money so that they pay their mobile phone. They will then see and get used to managing direct debits and get, uh, managing payments. So if they're a member of a club, they've got subscriptions, get the payment coming out of their bank account. Obviously, you want them to continue with that club, so you might subsidize it or pay it in its entirety. That's your family rule. But get them to pay it out of their own bank account so they're getting used to paying these bills. What a great lesson. If you grew up over time managing these payments, getting used to making these payments and getting them uh, due, and then when you go into your own life and you're more used to managing this situation. My own example, when I left home, I'd not made any payments. I moved in my wife, uh, rented property. We had our rent, our gas, electric. It was overwhelming, overwhelming. I was a trainee financial advisor at the time. Wow, was that a steep learning curve. Um, number five in my seven points of creating wealth is make the most of your money. Um, what I mean by this is if you've got money sat on deposit earning 0.1% and you've got credit card debt earning 15%, it makes no sense whatsoever. If you have unsecured debt, let's make sure that we uh, keep maybe a thousand pounds on deposit. I like premium bonds, so it's out of arm's reach. And let's use the rest of the money to pay down the debt to get yourself debt free. That will free up your cash flow. Now, some of you will say, but I've got this on interest free, da 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 da. Just get rid of the debt. I know it's interest free and I know there's an argument, but when that payment rate ends, you switch over, you're gonna pay two, 3%. Um, it's a debt around your neck as I see it. It's taking up monthly cash flow, which could be used to invest. Um, I want you to be unsecured debt free as fast as possible. I want you to have three to six months of your expenditure on deposit and I want you fully funding for your retirement. That's the aim, that's the goal, that's the, um, the, the sweet, the qualm, as they said in Jerry Maguire. Um, I want you to really focus, make sure that you're making the most of your money and your investments as well. So if you've got pensions, make sure that you are um, claiming the higher rate tax relief if it applies to you. Make sure you're claiming the additional rate tax relief if it applies to you. Make sure it's invested appropriately. So 
A couple of things that I've said there, the higher rate tax relief. So if you earn 50,000 pounds a year or more and you pay the contributions yourself, you'll get 20% tax relief going into the pension scheme, but you need to ask the in revenue for the additional 20% to make up to 40. You do that by writing to them with a pension contribution certificate and they'll arrange that. They'll either arrange it by increasing your personal allowance or they'll send you a check refund. Same goes for additional rate taxpayer, but also you're just looking for a little bit more. Um, if you're a married couple, one of you is a non-taxpayer, one of you is a basic rate taxpayer, make sure you're using the married couple's allowance. Um, make sure you're claiming the things you're able to claim for. Make sure your investment allocation is appropriate. It's a general rule of thumb, we use 100 minus your age. So if you're in your 30s, listen to this, that means you'd have about 70% of your money in equities. Now, principally guys, this is for your retirement money. This isn't for anything else, this is for long-term money. Um, if you're in your 50s, you'd want 50 minus 50, so about 50% of your money in equities, the balance being in bonds. So that's a general rule of thumb. Have a look at lexo.co.uk and you can look at the risk profiles of each of those portfolios, see if it does apply to you. Um, <clears throat> number six, to so come into the home stretch, number six out of the list is make investment a priority. You have to invest to create wealth. Uh, one of the books I read in the early days was called The Richest Man in Babylon. Um, one of the things there is give yourself the first 10% of your income. You know, times have gone on. We've upped it to 12.5% is a minimum, the first working hour of a working day. But you have to set your retirement funding up. Otherwise, you will retire broke. I've done a video on how much you need to put away at different stages of your life. But in essence, let's make it 12.5%. And if you can get it through your employer contributions, great. Do me a favor, look at your expenditure. If you are putting more money on car finance or you're spending more money on your holiday, you have your priorities wrong. Make sure you're putting more money in your retirement fund than you're spending on your car or on your holiday. All right. And then number five on the home stretch. So number five is be patient. Creating wealth is a journey. It takes time. Very few people create wealth overnight. When you start investing today, you will not see the rewards of your investment for a number of years. That's why few people create wealth. When you plant a seed, nothing seems to be happening. You don't see the tree for many, many, sometimes years. But underground things are working away. It's the same with the investment. Buy globally, buy index funds, be patient, allow the investment to do its thing, and over time you will be rewarded. Um, this is a proven track record of how to create wealth. It's happened for decades. Um, we can't tell you how much return with guarantees that you will receive, but investing in the stock market and investing globally has rewarded the patient investor. And the thing is, most people want instant gratification these days. They want things now. And that's why there's so much debt around because it allows us to buy the toys that we want on finance. Like no longer do I have to save up for something. I can just get finance on it. But listen to me guys, you can't finance your retirement. Okay, you can't finance your retirement. You are gonna have to save up for it. And the best thing to do is start saving now. I have the phrase, the best time to start saving was yesterday. The second best time is today. So please, if you're listening to this and you're not putting money away for your retirement, start. Can you do 12.5%? If you can't do 12.5%, can you do something? Just start. It's easier to improve something than it is start from scratch. And that's why I say use your workplace pension because it's in place. You can get salary deduction at source. So if you're an employee, as soon as you, in fact, if you're an employee and you're not in your workplace pension, hit pause, email your workplace uh, employer, pension scheme provider and get enrolled. It's that important, really, really is. So there's the seven steps. There's the seven steps for you to create wealth. Seven ways to build wealth today. One, have a plan. Two, make it automatic. Three, take advantage of your employer's pension scheme. Four, check your spending, make sure you're not overspending. Five, make your money work for you. Six, make investing a priority. And seven, be patient. I hope you've enjoyed this recording. Um, please give me some feedback. I do like to hear from you. I am able to respond to most of you at the moment. It is getting busy, which we love. 
Thank you so much. My name's been Warren Shute and this has been Financial Education for the Nation. I would love to hear your views. If you're listening to me on social media, make sure you go across to warrenshute.com and sign up for the Money Planner, which is a weekly update of all things financial. But until next time, take care.